look under a hardcore build of the last 30 years and chances are you're gonna find a Dana 60 under the front. Why? Why are these axles so sought after? Why are they so hardcore? What makes them so awesome? Well, in this week's episode, we're going to put this guy back together, re-gear it, rebuild the outers, and get into some detail as to why this axle needs to be on your short list if you are starting a rock crawler build. This is a GM Dana 60 Kingpin front axle, and it's one of the most highly sought after front axles in the off-road world. It hasn't been produced for a long, long time, but it was stuck in so many different vehicles in so many different configurations that they're still relatively easy to find. Notice I didn't say cheap because uh, the price on these has shot up dramatically. And essentially when you're buying a, a junkyard or an axle that's been sitting around for 20 years, you're gonna be dropping some money into it. You're basically just purchasing the case and all the hardware. All of the, the gears, the U-joints, the brakes, the rotors, the bearings, that stuff's most likely going to have to be replaced. And in my case, I tore everything out and replaced the locker, replaced the brakes, replaced the, uh, the axles, the hubs, everything. One of the main benefits of the Dana 60 is its raw simplicity. I mentioned earlier, this thing's overbuilt and it does not stop at the axle tubes. Everything about this is overbuilt. So here is a complete outer minus my axle shafts and hubs. And let's just go through all the pieces and then I'm gonna reassemble it and we're gonna go through the reassembly process. So starting at the inner seat out, this is your knuckle. This is what gives you the steering. The kingpin sits in here and then you've got a bearing that carries the load down at the bottom of the inner seat. Moving from the knuckle, this is my spindle. So this is what rides, the axle shaft rides in here, this bolts to the knuckle, and then the brake caliper mounts to the outside. Man, every, everything is so heavy, it's just so massively built. Moving on from the spindle, we get to the hub and the rotor. The hub and the rotor are attached via the studs. These are the studs I'm gonna be replacing here. And inside you've got more bearings that ride on the races in here and then your locking hub goes down here on the outside and secures everything together. These are your spindle lock nuts. There's two lock nuts. One has a locking ring on it that it's important that you put this lock washer on and then snug this guy down. Super simple. Let's throw this guy back together. The GM Dana 60 Kingpin front axle was the go-to for a long, long time. They were put in everything. The military used a version that uh, put a 14 bolt and the Dana 60 into a vehicle that was an awesome application you could find all over the place. And for me, they're just very, very easy to work on. It's nice to have the same axles under my vehicles and you can work on them and disassemble and reassemble with just a few basic hand tools. The way they go back together, once you've mounted the knuckle to the inner C, you're gonna bolt the bottom retainer plate on and you're gonna put the poly into the kingpin and put the top plate on that. You're then gonna pack your spindle full of grease and stuff that on there too. Once the spindle's on, that will be held in place by the backing plate for the caliper that uh, bolts to the spindle. And then it's just a matter of packing the hub full of grease stuffing the hub and the rotor back onto the assembly, and then using the lock nuts to cinch it all down and get your preload on your bearings. The preload is pretty simple, just make it tight. This thing's gonna be under quite a bit of force, so I always just kind of over tighten my bearings until there's absolutely no play and I have a slight amount of drag. Once that's done, it's just a matter of putting the hub together. The locking hubs go on and uh, once again, they are incredibly simple and reliable. They just engage the inner splines of the hub to the outer splines of the axle shaft when you turn the locking hub assembly. That's all there is. They're strong, they're easy to work on, they're quick to work on, parts are available everywhere. And uh, did I mention that they were strong? 
Remember when I said I was gonna do a Dana 60 install uh, of my gears and bearings? Well, I didn't really mean me. I meant that dude right there. You know, so I can blame him when something goes wrong. No, but seriously, it's, uh, it's one of these things that I know how to do it, but I also know that having an extra set of eyes and hands and someone to stop me from throwing the carrier across the shop when I have to take it out for the 18th time will be helpful. So my boy Duke's here today to help me. We're gonna go through some of the challenges with setting up gears, why people are so intimidated by it, and uh, how to do it properly, or, or at least good enough, you know? Let's go. The main reason that a 60 is harder to do than a 14 bolt or an AAM, you do not have those adjustable preload cups on the side of the carrier. So much like the, the AAM and the 14 bolt have these carrier caps that you can tighten without pulling everything apart. The way that it works with the Dana 60, you've got these shims of varying size thicknesses. They're all different thicknesses and you put them right like that and that's how you get your backlash well you get your backlash a couple of different ways but that's how you get the case backlash and the bearing preload and a bunch of other stuff is with these guys and it's kind of a pain in the ass because you put it on you press the bearings on you spread the case you drop it in the case you put the pinion in you get everything dialed and then you test it and if it's, if it's wrong, <laughs> start over. Do you have bearing tools, race tools? Uh, no, but I've got old bearings. And I've got all, I use these guys. Okay. Uh... There are a bunch of specialized tools that would be really nice to have. Um, there's a bearing cup press. Well, not a cup press, it's like a, it's like a shim hammer holder that allows you to whack it in to get it in easier. I don't have that. There's also a bunch of bearing removal tools that I don't have. We can get by without those two. I do have a case spreader uh, that Duke brought. In addition to being really, really massively overbuilt, these are also really hard to come by. And when you do get them, they're often in pretty bad shape. This is how my Dana 60 looked when it arrived from the East Coast. It had obviously been uh, been under a work truck for years and years and years. So it's a, it's a good feeling to be getting this thing back together and have it look like a brand new differential and housing after all that hard work. I'll put a link up here so you can go watch me uh, sweat it out getting this thing dialed in again because it took a lot of elbow grease grinding and blasting same as when i did the 14 bolt or the aam the bearing caps matter you have to make sure that the bearing cap not only the side that it's on but the orientation top or bottom it has to go back on the same side the tolerance is we're dealing with with thousands of an inch. That's, that's how much difference uh, it's gonna make when we change the, the shims. It's, you're dealing in single thousands. So make sure that your bearing cap that you remove, just mark it. I use a grease pen, top passenger side. You don't wanna get them confused. Setting up an axle and ring and pinion is a matter of uh, thousands of an inch. And so here we have the kit from Yukon that comes with all my pinion shims and the carrier shims. And what I've done is I've measured them all and marked them by thousands of an inch. So you can see here, I've got a one thousandth. I mean, this thing is so skinny all the way up to, this is 30 thousandths. Having this little chart right here allows me to grab something quickly and double check it before I put it in. But this is how I am gonna try and keep track of what shims I'm using. So we're checking the preload on the bearings with a beam style torque wrench. So you can see we're able to watch as it goes around 
and get an idea of what the preload is, meaning that you want some drag on the bearing in the pinion. And so that's dependent on how tight you make this. Now, once we've got the pinion in, we've got the bearing preload set, we now put the carrier in and uh, take a look at what our backlash looks like. But what did you uh, set that at, six to 10 thousandths? Yeah, it's between six and 10. Yeah. So you're right at six. So for those of you who have ever wondered what these holes are on the front of a housing, it's for using the case spreader. So this guy is gonna do what it says. It's gonna just pull this case apart, maybe just a couple thousands, to hopefully give us a little bit of room to drop the carrier assembly in. It's still gonna put up a fight. So we're gonna throw the carrier in for the first time and we have shimmed it appropriately to give us a good benchmark. So here, this is 28 thousandths. We've got 30 thousandths on the other side. That is going to drive the ring gear towards the pinion and give us a little bit tighter pattern to begin with, which is kind of what you want. And uh, yeah, so this is what we will just start off with. And if this looks good, which it's highly unlikely it won't. <laughs> Let's just be honest here. It's gonna be pretty good. All right. uh, so I'm gonna let Duke lose a finger. Do you have any idea of the orientation of the wires? Yeah, 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 the wire just needs to go. It just goes up top so we can drill out through the case. Okay, so this can rotate all the way around. Yeah, 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 it's, you don't need to worry about it. Okay, okay don't drop it. If you are gonna drop it, drop it on my toes. Drop it on your feet. Okay, the first fit of the carrier, we had no backlash or like one thousandths, which is not enough. And we ran a pattern and we're sitting really deep. So we pulled out a shim, which is gonna drop the pinion back and it's gonna move our contact on the ring gear towards the, the outside, uh, which is where we want it. Did we, we didn't check preload or anything on the, not preload, we didn't check anything else on the pinion, but the pattern looked decent. So if we can get the backlash set, we can move over onto the preload and uh, be cooking. Two people does make a difference, especially when one of them actually knows what he's doing. And we're still running 30, 35 or 28, 35. I'm gonna go to, um, a thicker one, go to 38. It went in fairly easily last time, so that's why we're adding to it this time. And all we're doing is putting a shim right here that just moves the bearing up a little bit and just the distance between the two bearing races increases, which is what increases your preload. You don't need gloves for those delicate little fingers of yours. Dude, they're short enough as it is. <laughs> That's true. You're losing digit, man. You're horrible. Listen, dude, you're a good friend, but if, if you lose a finger, that's on you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nails! That's about seventh aisle. I can tell by the tone. <laughs> Apparently the case spreader does do something. Oh yeah. Our contact patch looked pretty decent, so we just threw some more paint on just to get a really good print, but I'll show you what it looks like when we're done here. When you are checking pattern, you do need to put a little bit of drag into the system, otherwise, you know, it might explode. So you're, you're midway between the tooth and you actually got a pretty good pattern in there. Let's see the other side. So the heel is just on the back side of the tooth. I'd like to bring it up a little bit. 
Um, we might be able to change that. So this is track from the pinion. This and is then, your coast and then your drive. Your yeah. drive is really good. Your coast is a little bit smushed. How can you change your coast without changing your drive? You change the pinion depth. And that would change... It'll change everything. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't... So, so it basically will bring it... Instead of here, it'll bring it further up on here. You actually want it deep and in the middle, which you have on your drive. And then your coast... That's your drive gear right there. That's yeah. really good. That's exactly what you want. So would you, if your coast is off, but your so, drive is good, yeah, would you, you leave it? I would. Now I'm going to check, I'm going to check your backlash. Okay, here it is. Cleaned, prepped. I got my hole drilled right oh, here okay. for the e-locker. I covered it with it. I covered the gas tank. <laughs> it's, oh, it's not, that's not what's venting. There's no sender unit in it. Oh, yeah. Better you even look that for. I was like, so yeah, you, nor gas. You were trying to stop the smell of gas, but left the big offending hole in the tank. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> All right, so uh, pressing on the bed. Well, they're on. He yeah, must have done that. PD set, preload set. <laughs> we're ready to drop the carrier in. I, I, I don't know why I'm building my own truck. <laughs> I should have just called him a long time ago and be like, could you, could you decrease the entire frame? Just weld everything. Uh, yeah, so uh, big milestone. Dana 60 gears and full rebuild kit is almost in. And uh, pressing the bearings on, about to drop the carrier in. Backlash is all done. Preload is all done. Uh, pinion depth, pinion preload. We're gold. All the, uh, the seals are in the axle tubes. Bearing uh, races have been pressed in with a big hammer. And... What else? Uh, cleaned your hole. I deburred it. He deburred my hole. <laughs> All right, uh, this is a kid's show. Okay. <laughs> Don't drop my junk. <laughs> well, you can drop it in there. Yay. Okay. Boom. It goes without saying that I'm a big fan of these axles. If you are too, and you're looking for more information, check out this playlist I'll put up here that will have all of my axle videos from rebuilds to, uh, to tear downs and everything in between. Make sure to give me a subscribe, a like, check out my Patreon page. I'll put it up there and we'll see you next week. Eric's Garage.